From a new assignment when first laid out, it kind of made the title of the class make sense all of a sudden. Um, because before that, I wasn't really sure what discovery and invention really meant. My initial thoughts on the project were, oh my god, I don't know anything about hardware. How am I going to do this project? There's like wires, an Arduino, what is an Arduino? And, uh, I'm not a hardware person, I'm, I'm a software person. Like, I felt really uncomfortable with the thought of actually using wires and real circuits. I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna work if I tried to do it. I thought the thermal flashlight sounded like a fun project, partially because I just like glowy lights, but partially because I liked the, uh, the sort of final product being something that could be useful to anyone if they were curious about um, the temperature and being able to visualize it of anything, particularly in their own home, particularly in my home. The public lab website is a little overwhelming when you first visit it. I found it interesting that while there are lots of details on what needs to happen to make your project work, there's not exactly step-by-step -step instructions. And we sort of figured that out uh, halfway into it. It told you what to get and they had links which were helpful with uh, getting exactly what kind of LED and what kind of breadboard and it told you what kind of Arduino to get. So there wasn't really any research on what you needed for the project. You just had to click on the links and, and buy them. So that was very helpful. It said it would cost between 40 and $60, but that was not true. It cost much more than that. It ended up being a lot more expensive than we thought it was going to be. Like it said 40 to $60 on the website and we probably spent a lot more than that. Plus we had to buy additional things because um, like some of the LEDs didn't work and we had to buy more. But one of the materials just said wire, and we thought, okay, there's wire in the GBU lab, but it ended up not being the right type of wire. So I think that they might want to specify what items you can get on the website. We were pretty sure we had to solder the project. We had, we had to find a place where there was going to be soldering, where there was going to be wire, where we were going to have access to. So our first thought was to go to the invention studio. But the Invention Studio is not 24-7, and it's usually pretty crowded. So uh, we ended up deciding on the GVU, which is in the TSRV in Tech Square. And uh, basically you, you go in the TSRV and you go down this elevator and it's like down this hallway. And uh, it, it was pretty empty, there, there wasn't really anybody in there. So the, the prototyping lab uh, in the basement has everything you could ever possibly want uh, to make projects like this come together. But they had all these drawers and drawers and drawers that you just go through and uh, they had things you could borrow or use like wire. The biggest issues we ran into were confusion uh, around the materials we had ordered, which were what was on the list, and the diagrams we were seeing. And we laid out what we had and opened the diagram and we realized the breadboard that we had was not matching the diagram. The breadboard we had didn't even make sense. It was like this little tiny white breadboard. And that, that was the one they told us to buy, but the picture they had on the website was like this big, huge breadboard that had all this extra space on it. Our breadboard did not have positive and negative power rails, so we were really confused. Uh, fortunately, we looked around and we were able to find this breadboard in the GBU, which was about the same size. It wasn't perfect. So we had to figure out how to make it work um, with our style of breadboard. We also were a little confused by the types of wires that we were using. We realized all of it was threaded, and the threaded wire wasn't working because it would fray when you try and stuff it into the breadboard. But we did find one spool of solid wire, but the problem with that is one spool is one color. And also since there were uh, a lot of different colors in the diagram, different wires, and there's only one spool, we decided to tape our wires and make them pretty so we could still keep them color-coded. Then we cut the wires and we stripped them so that the little exposed wire could go into the breadboard. So then we had all that set up and we started putting wires and putting resistors and capacitors into place. Uh, we had our LED that we put that on the breadboard and we had the little thermometer, put that on the breadboard. So, so when we first started working with the breadboard, we had like these really long wires. They were like sticking out all these different directions and they were like these huge loops like above the breadboard that we had like jammed to the Arduino. And it was really like 
really ugly and it's kind of hard to like handle if you like picked it up because the wires are so long they'd pop out um, and you had to like redo it and put them back in again. When we finally put all the wires in the right places matched up to the diagram and we saw on the Arduino the power light was on so we knew the circuit was correct, we loaded the software onto the Arduino and we got an error. It was, it was disappointing. The hierarchy of the files was messed up so we switched that around. So once the Arduino had its brains, we went ahead and turned it on, and uh, the, the LED didn't work at first. It was like just like one color. The LEDs ended up being pretty cheap, so when we first set up the whole circuit uh, and got the power on and the software working, it didn't work and we had no idea why, and then we thought we should try a different LED. Fortunately, we had bought two LEDs and we put the other LED in, and it lit up, so we found out that the LEDs aren't very good. And actually, our second LED, the blue light ended up not working, so we had to order more. After working with both the hardware and the software for a few hours, and it was like the moment of truth, and we put everything together and put the power to it and switched it on and uploaded the code, and something happened. It was so exciting. Something was lighting up, but it was shiny and pretty, and it meant that we were, if not quite there yet we were on the right track and it was so exciting we uh we like were shining in at things and it, it was red because the flashlight's supposed to turn red when it's held over a warm surface so like our bodies are in the air was warm so we said oh my god we have to figure out if it works for cold things too and we looked around we tried like fishing ice out of a cup and like shining it at the uh at the flashlight but that didn't really work and then we saw that there was a refrigerator in the GVU, so we opened that and stuck the flashlight in the refrigerator and it turned blue. We went through several iterations of the flashlight because at first we had it all working, but it was still attached to the GVU's breadboard. And it was like, great, we spent all this time on this project, but we can't do anything with it. We can't take it home. We can't take it out of this lab because this is property of the GVU. Our next task was translating the layout of the wires that were attached to the GVU's breadboard into one of the little tiny breadboards that we had. We actually ended up making quite a few changes, at least in the scope of our abilities. So by changing the breadboard, we completely reorganized um, the wires so that they fit smaller size breadboard. Um, we had to learn how to make one of those columns into a power reel, which is something we were not familiar with before, so we learned about that. Um, and we have a new diagram that we're going to contribute um, online as well, in case anyone else wants to use the little um, mini breadboard that we ended up using. So in the example page on Public Labs, they had a GIF of someone flashing this flashlight over hot and cold objects. We looked at our apparatus and the wires were hanging everywhere and the battery was separate and there was the breadboard and the Arduino and we did not know how to hold it all together nicely so we decided we would make a sort of flashlight enclosing so you could hold it all as one piece. We also decided we needed a switch for the battery so that we could turn the power off and on instead of pulling the battery out because every time we removed the battery and put it back in, we would have to strip the wires because the end of the wires would get frayed. Uh, La found a pencil box and she actually was able to uh, change the layout so it fit inside this pencil box and she put jumpers onto the thermometer and the LED so they would fit outside of the breadboard because before they were jammed right into the breadboard and it was really hard to use this like breadboard to point at things. Also, we're going to uh, include a diagram online that shows how we made a, like a form, a little box for ours, so it's kind of like a flashlight you actually hold, in case anyone else wants to try that as well. 